Medicine. Education. Development. For low income families. Everywhere. Right now we have about 60 members, I think, at Dartmouth. We decided to do applications for the first time this year because interest in the group was growing a lot. But we had some members who were involved but not super involved. And we decided that it would be better to have a smaller group but have people who are really dedicated than have a huge number of people involved who only showed up every once in a while. And so we got about 110 applications this year and we accepted 49 people. Um, we require that each person does at least five hours of fundraising each term and attends all of the meetings and then we're going to be doing another round of applications in the winter but we just try and make sure that the people who are involved in the group stay as involved as possible and it's harder when the group gets this big so we try and do things at meetings like discussions and meeting in small groups. Uh, we broke all the groups down into or all the students down into groups of about eight. Um, to do a fundraiser like that. We sent people to different businesses in town with their groups to ask if we could have coin collection boxes there and then we had them count the coins all together and we're going to be using those groups for all different kinds of fundraisers in the winter. So we just try and make the group feel as small as possible while still having as big of a workforce as possible to get as many fundraising hours in and as much work done without people feeling like they're a nameless face in the crowd. My name is Sarah Wilds and I'm the membership director of Medlife at Dartmouth. Cool. That's very cool. Um, so why do we do these discussions? Um, well as Chris said earlier, we do them to get the membership involved in the meetings, um, so that they're not just kind of like sitting there with a blank stare on their face, but they're actually like invested in the process. And it also not only gets them, uh, like involved in the meeting right now, but it also, um, depending on the different topics we do, it also gets them thinking about like the future goals of MedLife, how MedLife fits into the larger picture of like what's going on in the world. And um, we also recently had a discussion that was just like brainstorming for like how can we improve MedLife, how can we make a difference. And so it's things like that that we can then take up to the national level and um, like kind of spread those ideas throughout other chapters of MedLife too. So yeah, that's great. awesome. And so do you do all the discussions? Do you lead them or? I do not. I actually have a very small part in the discussions, which is great because it means that the members, we pick like two members every week and they, it's their own like, prerogative to go out and like find a news article or like a little video clip or something that they think is interesting and pertains to MedLife in the real world and then they share it with the rest of us. Uh, they run the discussion. We've had some really, really great ones. Uh, we just started this this year and it's like really taken off. Really cool. Fun. That sounds awesome. Um, and you want to talk about maybe like fun things that the group gets to do that's not necessarily like medlife related but like group bonding? Uh, well we do dinners every week. We try and schedule it so that there's one on each day of the week um, in case people have long-standing commitments on different days and we make sure there's at least one or two execs at each of them to try and get people to hang out in a setting outside of medlife so they feel like they're really a part of something rather than just doing fundraising work because sometimes it can get boring to just sit at fundraisers and sell things. Um, we also today just had people putting together care packages, which was really cool because I got to know a few people that I hadn't met before. Um, we have some social events outside of <laughs> MedLife. We've also talked about having a med prom. Uh, we're doing a conference with a couple other schools at Dartmouth, which is going to be a fundraiser too. And so it'll be a really cool way to connect with people from other MedLife groups. And we also have people who go on mobile clinics, which is an amazing way to get to know other people in the group. Um, one of the people who's on my mobile clinic my freshman year became one of my best friends after that and we're still incredibly close here at Dartmouth and so it was a really amazing way to get to know some other people and it definitely increased my involvement in the group to feel like I was really part of a group of friends rather than just doing fundraising on my own. And then Sarah Wild is our membership director and she has Steph Picone who's in charge of recruitment and marketing and Steph plans events that are open to the campus to get people thinking about global health issues and increasing interest in MedLife outside of the group so that when we have fundraisers people know what our mis mission is and what we're trying to do. Uh, Chloe Teeter is our secretary and so she keeps tabs on people coming to meetings. Um, she make, takes all the notes and gets them to the membership to make sure that everyone's informed about what's going on. And then Katie Burkhardt and Max Pillsbury are our social chairs, and they plan those events that I talked about before, such as Med Pong, Med Prom, and uh, some of the different dinners that we have. Oh my god, Medlife was so much fun today. <laughs>